The problem with security cameras, no matter how good they are, there will always be blind spots. The answer, a pan tilt camera. But what if you need to place that camera where you don't have power? That is where the Eufy SoloCam S340 can help. Not only will you not have blind spots, but with the dual lenses, you could see both wide angle shots and telephoto view at the same time. The S340 also has AI human and vehicle tracking. Does that sound like what you've been looking for? I would like to thank Eufy for sponsoring this video and providing me with the S340 for this review. When you look at the overall dimensions of the S340, you are looking at 3.4 by 3.4 with a total height of just the camera unit of 4.72 inches. The overall weight is 2.5 which is really good considering all of the technology that you're getting packed into this. Starting at the top of our camera right here, this is an LED status light. Coming down underneath that, this is our speaker. Notice it is front facing so that you'll always have good audio and is separate from the rotating ball head underneath. As we come down, as I've mentioned before, this is what I'm gonna call the command center. This is where all of the smarts and extras that this camera offers lives. Starting off in the upper left-hand corner, you have a 2K telephoto lens with an aspect ratio of 2304 by 1296. And this offers hybrid zoom when you're not splitting your view, which I'll show you a little later. If not, this is set for three times zoom. So you'll get to see objects closer. To the right of that, we have our LED light. This is made up of four individual nodes, giving you a hundred lumens and acts as a spotlight. It is a warm light, so it's not a brutally bright white light like you do get with some other cameras. In the middle here, we have our light sensor that will allow the camera to know whether it's daylight or night. Here we have our PIR sensor. This is a heat-based motion sensor. This is a battery-powered camera, so that is how you're going to detect movement. It's not going to be a pixel-based motion sensor. There also will be an extra piece of plastic on this that you'll need to peel off. So there's a piece of plastic here and then one here. Don't forget that. To the right of that, we have our 3K wide angle lens with an aspect ratio of 2880 by 1620. This also has digital zoom and then we'll switch over using hybrid zoom to your telephoto lens if you're using it on a single image view instead of the split, which is one of the cool things that this can do. The field of view on our wide angle view is 135 degrees, which is really good considering where I have this placed. I can see the end of my driveway and the start of my backyard all in one frame, which is really good. Underneath that, we have our microphone. So this is how you'll speak through the camera. What I'm gonna do now is flip the camera over here to show you where our two lenses are. There's this lip or channel around them. This helps to keep the weather off of the lenses themselves. The motion range of this camera, because it is a pan tilt camera, is 360 degrees horizontal and 70 degrees vertical, giving you full coverage with no blind spots, which is great and one of the main reasons you should be looking at a pan tilt camera like this. You also have built-in AI tracking of people and vehicles, meaning that if something moves in front of it and it's a person or a vehicle, this will automatically track them, which is great. If you're concerned about the speed of your target as it's moving through frame, don't worry. There are speed settings that you can set within this. When set to its maximum setting, I did a test run, and yes, it is going to be horrible to watch me try and run, but it kept up with me very well, and even in darker lighting situations where I fall on my face, all for the purposes of thoroughly testing this. And if that doesn't deserve a like, I don't know what does. One question that I always have with cameras like this is what happens if two subjects happen to come into frame? Well, 99% of the time, because this is a heat-based motion sensor, it will track the initial target. I did several tests with my wife, sorry, I can't show you, she doesn't like being on camera, where we crossed paths, ran in other directions. 99% of the time, it will track the original person that it starts tracking. When we're talking about video from this, you are going to get 15 frames per second, no matter what mode you're in, whether you're looking through the telephoto, the wide angle, or the split view, it's always going to be 15 frames. That includes daylight and nighttime. As we come back to the top of our command center, the S340 has the option to use both LED, but also IR lights. And in this case, there are a total of four IR lights, three across the top here and one over to the side, if you like classic black and white for your night vision. If we come to the top of our camera, you'll notice that I have an attachment. And this attachment is a swiveling ball joint 
which if I unscrew and remove, will allow you to have the solar panel, which I'll show you in a moment, mounted to the top. What I'm unscrewing and showing you is this piece right here actually comes out. Learn from my mistake. Remove this. Don't try and put your screws in around it. It is a non-winning proposition and you'll just give yourself a headache. Learn from my mistakes. Take that centerpiece out. As I stated before, you can have a solar panel mounted to the top right here, which makes placement of this much easier because you don't have to worry about power. We'll get back to the solar panel a little later. On the back of the camera, we have our sync button as well as our very well weather stripped and deeply recessed USB-C port to power this camera, whether that be you're taking it down and charging it or you're powering it via that solar panel. We also have a mounting bracket on the top, which will allow you to either mount your camera on a wall or if you reverse it and don't have this up here under an eave like that. The operating temperature of the S340 is negative four degrees Fahrenheit up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. There is currently no IP rating listed for this camera, but what I can say is shortly after I put this camera up, I had a week of rain where I was getting about a month's worth of rain in that short period of time. So I was able to put this through its paces. It got thoroughly soaked and I can tell you for sure that it has a high enough IP rating that it is perfectly fine in the rain or deluge or rain coming at it from all sorts of directions. I was out there, I was testing, but it is an outdoor camera, so you'll be perfectly fine. Aside from the camera itself, you do get a couple of other things in the box with it, so let's take a look at that now. On the right-hand side, we can see, remove the film first before using, but this is the solar panel that you'll be using with the camera. We've got our mounting hardware. Here we have the actual hardware, our cable. We have power cable, so that's a USB-C, and then there's a nice watertight USB-C cover right there. We have a small USB-C to USB-A cable. We've got a packet with information in it. Oh, in that packet, we get a positioning sticker and then a quick start information guide right there. Actual camera itself, kind of take a quick little walk around. That is everything that we get in the box. With One thing I neglected to mention when I was talking about the cable is that this is actually a 10 foot cable, giving you plenty of leg room as to where you place the camera versus where you have your solar panel and cable. One other thing that I want you to be aware of is this mounting bracket in the back here. One of the things that I like about it is you simply push it into place and you can actually push these two tabs to remove it and put it back. What that means, and you might not have realized this, this portion can be mounted on a wall, and if for whatever reason I need to charge the camera, fiddle with the camera, look at something, I simply have to press this, and I can take the camera elsewhere while this is still mounted into a wall, and then come back when I'm done, and just simply press into place and put my camera back to where I had it. That is actually a really nice design for a mounting solution that I hadn't expected. Now that we've talked about the camera hardware, what else we get in the box, we have to set this up. There are two different ways that we can set this up. First being, we can set this up over Wi-Fi, utilizing the eight gigabytes of internal storage that this camera has, or if you have the Homebase 3 and want the extra AI advantages that you get with the Homebase 3, which is how I set this up. So let me show you what that was like. This will be set up of the Eufy SoloCam S340. It is recommended that you charge the S340 here uh, using the included power cables. It says up to eight hours, but I'm impatient. So we're gonna try this without charging it. Make sure to remove all of the plastic and there's gonna be an extra bit here on the PIR sensor. Uh, that you need to remove too. So just make sure that you do that before you start the process. The solar panel, we will not need for the installation, but you will need to have a Eufy account and the Eufy application on your smartphone. Open it up. What we're gonna do now is we are going to come up here to the plus sign in the upper right-hand corner, at least for the Android version right here. I'm going to select plus, and we're gonna pick what kind of camera do we have. In our case, this is a battery powered camera. And then we're gonna look for the S340, which is right here. We're gonna select the plus sign. We're going to add it to my home or we can add it to a new home. Select next. We have a choice. We can connect it directly to our router or we can connect it to our home base three. I do recommend the home base three as it will allow you to connect a lot of your Eufy devices in one location rather than having to worry about the internal memory because there is no expandable SD card on this particular camera. So you will be relying on that. 
But if you have the home base, you have a near infinite amount of space because you can always upgrade the hard drive that's in here. So I'm going to select home base. So it's letting me know after connecting, new recordings will be stored locally on the home base. Video stored in the camera will only be accessible if the camera is disconnected from the home base. So keep that in mind going forward. I'm going to select yes. We are going to scan the QR code on the back of the camera. Okay, so we're just gonna take this and scan the QR code. And now we're going to select connect to home base three. I am going to have to move, I believe, the camera closer to the home base three so that the two of them can talk to each other. All right, not the best impromptu view of this, but we are right on top of this. So I'm gonna select next. And then we have to take our camera and hold the sync button down till we hear a beep which it did, and the front is flashing. We hit next. It is going to generate a QR code that I will need to scan with the camera. Connecting to the Wi-Fi network, please wait. So I scanned it. It said connecting to the Wi-Fi network, please wait. So we're just gonna let that do its thing. So this said, device added successfully. This said setup complete. And there we can see it added it to my Alex A devices and I can just hit done now. Now we can select where we want this couple of pre-selected or we can make our own i'm going to say that this is garage and move to next and then we can choose how we want this to work do we want optimal battery life meaning video clip lengths will only be 20 seconds and some other things happen do we want optimal surveillance where video clips can be up to 60 seconds and the system will attempt to record each event as it happens or custom Custom means you can say, hey, I want it to be this long. I want it to be this long. We can change these after the fact, but I'm going to select optimal surveillance to start and select next. And here we go. Notification. We have most efficient, which is get them without delay. So no little thumbnail. I can get full notification, which will be get text notification first, then thumbnail included if available, and then include thumbnail, get full notification, including Text and thumbnail, if available, that one will take a little longer. I'm gonna select our second option here to see if it'll give me a thumbnail. So here, this is giving us some options. Again, we can change this later. Uh, whether we want to enable the microphone and audio recordings, based on this, when audio recording is off, the microphone still lets you hear uh, from the live video, but it won't be saved to your local footage. So that is a nice feature. And then here, it wants us to fully charge this camera before mounting using the included uh, peripherals. We're going to hit next. And then it's going to actually walk us through how to properly mount this. Here it shows us the proper way to actually mount this. And you have to slide in order to select next. And it is telling us about the mounting for the solar panel itself. Right here, it's going to test the signal strength. And then right there, you can see me waving. So we're going to hit next. And it's got AI tracking. So I'm sure we'll be able to turn that off later, but I'm going to turn that on by default right there and select next. And here it wants you to do preset positions. As you saw, not terrible at all, setting it up via the home base three. If you're not going to use the home base three, do know that this is a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi spectrum, not five gigahertz, meaning longer range, slower speeds, but even with that 3K video, you will be perfectly fine. SoloCam S340 also is compatible with voice assistants such as Google Voice and Alex A. Powering your camera is an internal 10,000 milliamp battery, giving you up to four months of battery life if you don't solar charge it or bring it into charge, depending on the number of triggers. However, if you use the included solar panel with your S340, you can have forever power. Now, what do I mean by that? Utilizing the adjustable 2.2 watt solar panel, which utilizes solar plus technology with as little as two hours of direct sunlight daily, you'll have enough charge to keep the camera continuously powered. And what I could say about this small two and a half by two and a half solar panel, the solar plus technology is actually very impressive. You can't really see the solar cells there. It's almost all solar cells really, except for the very edges. I had this up right before that week of rain that I was describing to you earlier, it was ridiculously cloudy. And even on a overcast day, the solar panel picked up enough solar power to charge this even on a day like that. So use that as a data point. The S340 also is compatible with cross camera tracking. So if you have multiple cameras that support this, what that means is if somebody walks in front of this camera and then another Eufy camera that supports cross camera tracking, it will stitch that video together, giving you a seamless video of that person. Sadly, the S340 is the only camera that I have currently that is compatible with that, so could not test that, 
but just know if you have other cameras that support that, this will add to your arsenal. Rock solid hardware is not enough when evaluating a camera. You want to see what the software looks like. And that is where the application for the Eufy Cam S340 comes in. So let's take a look at that. This is the application for the Eufy Solo Cam S340. I have the particular camera up here at the top. And what we're going to look at right here is all of these little icons that we get before we even access our device. In the upper right hand corner right here, this is an indication that my solar panel is not plugged in correctly or I'm using a third party solar panel and I should probably go check that out. And if I select go check, it's going to give me some directions as to, hey, what's going on. And then once I do that, I can do a wire test and it will kind of talk to the two. And there you see, oh, it is successfully connected. And then I can come back here and that little icon goes away. Further down on this page, we have our three dots in the lower right hand corner. If I select this, this will allow me to go directly into the settings for the camera, or I can select to snooze, meaning I will not get a notification for a specific set of time, 30 minutes, an hour, all the way up to 12 hours if I want to. This is one of the unique features that I like about Eufy cameras in that you can snooze them so you don't get bombarded with notifications, especially if you're outside. Over here in the left hand side, there is a battery icon, there is a connection icon, looks like Wi-Fi, and then an icon that indicates that it is attached to solar, and then the name of the camera. To the right of those three dots, which I missed, there is a box with a number in it. In this case, that number is three. If I select that, that is going to bring me into, hey, here are all of the events that I've captured for this camera. Three means that those are the three most recent. And two of those are me walking by the camera, taking out the trash. And then the last one right before I came in is this cat that decided to wander through my yard. We'll come back to this area momentarily, because as you can see, it's accessible down here from the events area. If we come back and select our play button in the middle there, that's going to bring us into the camera itself. And right here, you can see I'm kind of at the point where it's dark. So the light is turning on, which is indicated right there. And I have the split screen view. So this is your wide angle versus your zoomed in. For now, I'm going to turn the light off. So you're going to see this, it's going to fade itself out. It's not quite dark enough yet where it needs to engage the IR lights, which is good. In the lower left-hand corner right here, you can see this is the quality. So I have it set to 3K. You can do auto 720 or 1080 right there. And from here, we have the ability to flip the view of this. So if we wanted to have a widescreen or landscape mode coming down, we have our record icon right here in the lower left. If I select this, whatever is on the screen will be recorded. And it's letting me know video will be recorded according to video quality live view. So I say, yep, I got that. And now it's recording a video. I can select that and it will now save it to my album. Here I have my sound. I can mute or turn on the audio, meaning I can hear what's coming from the camera. Here we have my mic toggle. If I press and hold this, now the people outside can hear me talking. Take your finger off, nobody can hear you anymore. Here we have our pan tilt controls. So notice it just pops up this little icon right here. And from here, we can move the camera around. And I wanted to bring the camera down to its lowest most point, because you see there's a little flash of blue. You're gonna see that whenever you get to the maximum range that this can do. Now you did see me before playing with this light icon. Well, that is a quick way to toggle on and off your light. Notice down here, there is, if I bring that up a little bit, a little dash. And if I swipe to the right, that brings me to my other set of controls. From here, I can screenshot right there. I take a screenshot. Notice that my directional pad does not go away unless I select to put it away. So if you need that always there, make sure you just turn that on. So doing a screenshot takes a still frame of whatever's going on in frame. I've got my night vision. I could do black and white, which is classic IR, colored night vision, meaning that those LED lights will turn on and then turn off, meaning I will not have the assistance of either. Here we have AI tracking on and off. This is a quick toggle, which you can access from other locations as well, meaning it will intelligently track people. These are preset locations that you can set up for your camera. In my case, I have for setup and I set it up before I did the split screen. So it actually shows me what level of zoom I was using for that. So I've got one that will three times zoom out over by my well over there. So this is what I was using it for. I have another three times quick one that zooms to the front of my house. I have my preset. Hey, this is where I want you to start one. And then I have one that I set up, which is just, hey, look down and let me know that things are kind of flooded or not. And I was mainly using this right here to do that. If for whatever reason I want to 
edit, change, or delete, I simply select this icon right here. And then it's showing me, hey, I've got all of these presets set up. Which one do I want to edit or remove? I can simply select the X in the upper right hand corner and that will get rid of it. Notice in this mode, I have to choose, do I want it to be the wide angle or the close up? In this case, I'll say, yes, I want to keep it as the wide angle uh, because I'm replacing my downspout view that I did before. So I'll just put this into position very quickly. There we go. I can see both my downspouts and then I can select set as default position means this is where I want the camera to start always. So I just come over here that's highlighted and I select set and I say, yes, that's fine. So now that is selected. When I set this one up, I set it up as the preset, but those are our positioning. Last icon we have is a 360 selecting. This will have the camera rotate and check itself 360 degrees. In my case, I have it very close to a wall, so I can't really see much. And if I had the IRs on, it would blow out the IRs. So just keep in mind where you have this place can determine the amount of visibility that you have, because if you have something that gets in the way on your widescreen, but your zoom still has room, well, that's still going to get blown out because the IRs are going to get in the way and kind of feed that back into the camera. In this case, it's really the LED lights that are getting fed back, so it doesn't look as bad. But uh, this gives you an idea of what the low light sensor looks like. Those are our camera controls. If we come to the upper right hand corner, now we have our setting sprocket. But to the left of that is our actual alarm trigger. So this will allow us to trigger the alarm for 30 seconds. Right now it's set for sound and light. I can say, no, I just want the light only. And I can say, trigger the sound on the camera only, sound on the home basin camera. And then do I want lights or lights or sound? In my case, I'm going to say camera only, camera sound only, home base sound, or in my case, I will not have it sign off. I'll not have it go off on my home base, but I'll do outside. And then I select confirm. What this is now doing is triggering outside. You can see it's strobing, should have given you a strobe warning. And my neighbors are probably wondering what is going on. I can, right from here, toggle that off. Notice it will ask, are you sure? I'm gonna say continue, and it does Take a little bit for that to turn off, but now it's off. And now we're gonna come up to the settings bracket right here. Selecting our settings bracket is gonna allow us to change, manipulate, and control certain aspects of our camera. Right here, there is a quick toggle for snooze, meaning I don't want this camera to record at all anymore. So I would click that. Here on the left, we have our connection type. In my case, I have it connected to my home base. If you had it connected via Wi-Fi, you would see that information here. Next, we have our motion detection. Right here, I have motion detection turned on and I can select active zones. If I set up an active zone, that will allow me to set up something to happen in a location. But I left this on because I wanted you to see that after setting up an active zone, you will only be notified of motion that occurs in that area. So if I come here and we'll swap this around, I can press the plus sign, create one, put that over there, create another one. And you'll see, we can have a maximum of two zones. Within those zones, that is the only time that I would be notified if there was movement. We can come down here, we have our detection type. Human recognition, meaning AI powered, human detection, vehicle detection, pet detection, and all motion. I don't have any cars that go through here, so I have that turned off, but I do have people and pets that frequent that area. Coming down, we have our detection sensitivity. I have it on six. I have pretty good results using that. Next, we have our AI tracking. This is the intelligent tracking that I showed you before, which will follow a human figure, but not pets. I wish it would follow pets because I got a lot of things that wander through my yard. Coming down, we have motion test. This will allow you to test the motion sensitivity. So if you walk out there, it would flash red, letting you know, hey, I picked you up. And then here we have tips for installation. And you may have seen me do this when I was actually setting it up, but it will walk you through the proper method setting up your camera's placement. Next, we have power management. If I select that, here we can see I'm not getting any solar power right now. The sun's not lit up. I do have a solar panel connected and it has 98% battery. At the current time of filming this segment, I've had this up for four days. It has detected 218 events and has recorded 62 of those events. Here, again, you may have seen this during setup, but I have options for either optimal battery life, meaning the clip length will be 20 seconds and it won't be as sensitive. I have optimal surveillance. Those clip lengths can be up to 60 seconds. And then I have a customize. So if I select this, I could select up to 120 seconds for my clip length and then my interval, how quickly in between triggers will it start the next one. 
and then end clip early if motion stops. So if it stops detecting and it hasn't made it to that 120, it will stop it. But that's what we can do under our customized recording. Power source, you've got two options, battery or external solar panel. It is on by default to battery. If you're going to use the accompanying solar panel, make sure to select that option or else you won't actually see that information up here. And then we have our dashboard. This dashboard is their solar input dashboard, letting you know how much energy you have saved by using the solar panel. So here I have seven days that I've been running it. If I had a 30 day graph, it would show up there, but this lets you know you're gaining this much power. And if you want to know, here's your solar charge efficiency. On the first day I had it out there, I had 945 watts then 30 watts, then 656. And today when I'm filming, I had absolutely no sun, so I didn't get any input there. And then the longer you use this, the larger this will grow and then become a tree that you can view and see. And it will tell you the total number of charging hours and then the total charge efficiency. So right now I have saved or taken from the sun 1,932 milliamps worth of power. So it's a nice metric if you're into data and that's all found under power management. Preset positions, I showed you this before, but this is another way that we can access this. So if we wanted to reset our preset positions, say that 10 times fast, this is another way and area that we could do that. Pan tilt calibration, just like it sounds, here's a place that we can turn on our AI tracking, just another area, and then pan tilt speed. This will allow us to set how quickly the camera moves left to right and up and down. It will load up a image right there, and then we have a little toggle right there allowing us to see in real time. So right now, if I move to the right, that is the speed. If I move it up to its fastest and then move it back to the left, that's the speed. So it is a, a finite way that you can calibrate how quickly you would like to see this move. And then if you wanted to, there's also a manual calibration that will 360 up, down, make sure that the camera is absolutely centered. Keep in mind, if you preset an area as a set default position, that is not the true and absolute center, you may notice when this comes back around that it's not going to be in the exact location. And we'll let that kind of swing back to the front. And no, this is not what I had as my preset, but that's what it's saying is the true center. Coming down, we have our spotlight settings. I can have the spotlight on or off, and then I have a brightness scale. This is a warmer white light as opposed to a cool white, but if you just don't wanna to have to deal with the light on, just toggle that off right there. And then we come down to our video settings, selecting this. Do we want any watermarks as part of this? In my case, I have the time and logo. I can just have the time, or I could select nothing. Video mode. I have dual mode currently turned on. When I first started testing this, I had single mode, which would allow me if I select that and then come back all the way to the front here. Now I have a toggle right here that allows me to select one or three. If I select three, this will push in and zoom and swap cameras. And then I'll pull that back out. That option is only available to you if under the video settings, you don't have the split screen. Ideally, you would have the split screen because that is one of the primary reasons that I like this camera. Yes, you saw the warning that it will drain the battery faster, but it is well worth it and it's solar powered to keep itself topped off. So you don't have anything to lose. Streaming quality, this is another area that you can access that. Auto 3K, 1080 or 720. Recording quality, well, how do you want these to be recorded? Night vision, how do you want things to be recorded at night? In my case right now, I have colored night vision that turns the LEDs on. I have black and white if I just wanted classic black and white with the IR. And then I could turn this off completely by selecting that. Coming down, we have privacy zones. If I add a privacy zone, I left this on. This is letting me know if I set up a privacy zone, the camera will no longer move. It will lose its pan tilt functionality. And in other companies, they don't take away that pan tilt functionality when you set up a privacy zone. But what a privacy zone does is adds a box that says, in the future, do not record anything in this. Do not allow me to see what is over here. In my case, I have a house over there. And if I had this camera tilted more that way, I would be like, no, I don't necessarily want to see anything in that house. Please put that there. So a privacy zone is a good option to have, but with a pan tilt camera, you might not want to utilize it unless you really are just keeping it in one spot. Audio settings, here we have microphone on or off, audio recording as part of your downloadable videos, make sure that audio track is there or not. Speaker, this is your speaker on or off. And then speaker volume, 80% is what it comes out of the box as. Notifications, 
Well, here we go. Saw me do this during the setup, but most efficient, text only, no picture, full effect, get text first, and then a thumbnail to follow if available, and then include thumbnail, takes longer because it's gonna put those two together. And then app alert tone, you've got some notification sounds right there. Coming down, we have general. So this is where you can rename your device if you wanted to, turn on and off the LED status light, change your Wi-Fi connection. So in my case, it's connected to the home base. If it wasn't, I could change my Wi-Fi right there. Storage, this is gonna show you the storage of, in my case, the home base. If you were using the internal storage of this camera, that would be shown there. Mounting guide, it's gonna walk you through the steps on how to mount this. And then about device, is how you get to your firmware, but also shows some sensitive information. So I will not be sharing that. Coming down, we have share this device. You can send an invite to somebody as long as they have their own Eufy account to share this camera and then share your thoughts. Do you want to tell Eufy how much you like or wish there was a different feature with their camera? You can do so by using that. And then last at the bottom there is remove this device. And that will remove the device from your Eufy account. And that's all the settings we have for the camera. But I'm going to bring you back to the home page of your Eufy app for one more thing. Down here, we have our events. If I select this, this is going to break out all of your events for all of your Eufy cameras. In my case, I have a filter set up to just show me the garage. If I select my clip, I have options. Downloading, we'll download it to your smartphone. Sharing, you could share it wherever you would. Donate, you would donate that clip to Eufy to help train their AI. Delete, self-explanatory, and then favorite. Favorite that as one of your personal favorites. AI Edge is going to be if you utilize the home base three, there's a lot of information in there. Go check out my review of it over there in the upper right hand corner if you're interested. That's everything that we could do for the Eufy Solo Cam S340 in the Eufy app. As you saw, there was a lot of customization that you can do for this camera. What else do we need to look at? Well, that would be the audio that we get from the camera. What I can say is the audio that you get from the speaker as well as through the application is very good, as I'll let you hear in a moment. But what I want you to pay attention to in those video clips is what you don't hear. And that is the rotation sound from the actual ball head. Because there are other pan tilt cameras out there, you will hear the rotation of the camera as the motors are running. Realistically, if this is outside, you won't hear it. The only time I heard this was in my studio with it completely quiet. And even then, it was not enough to be picked up by my lapel mic. Let me show you an example of audio from this camera. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Audio test from Yuffie Cam to application for the S340. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Test one, test two, test three, and test. After audio, the next important thing is video. You wanna know what the quality of video you can get from this is like. What I will say over there in the corner, I will have a link to the non-downscaled 3K video from this camera. For the purposes of this video, things have been downscaled to 1080. What I will say is during the daytime, you get crisp defined pictures. If you're looking at this overnight, IR lights are sharp and clear, the only only thing is if you are using the LED lights at night, there is minimal ghosting that you might see depending on how quickly your target is moving. Something else to consider with, with video is how quickly the camera actually returns to its center point after it's done tracking something. And I could say within seconds of the Eufy camera no longer having a lock on the target, it snaps back to its predefined home position, which is very good because that is where I wanted to pay the most attention as opposed to I followed something, let me wait over here for 10 or 15 seconds before returning to home. It just about snaps back to home in three seconds. One of the other tests that I like to do is actually detection tests, meaning how quickly will I get a push notification to my phone when this detects something. All right, this is gonna be notification speed test for S340 there. Should be all right. I mean, it's frame of sight, but 
there we go. Someone has been seen. And there is even the thumbnail of me standing right there. So, pretty good in the daylight. Not quite at its peak of where it could see me, because uh, right about there, it should have uh, sent me a notification, but it waited until I got a little closer. Uh, it's about mid-frame. I'm gonna come at it from a different angle and see if it picks me up faster, since this is the side that the PIR sensor is on. Right, pick me up, I can see it following me. Oh, there's the notification. That's a Eufy Garage. Yeah, well, garage and backyard. Uh, there's garage with thumbnail. So it sends it when I'm about halfway, regardless of which side I come from. And we are going to walk and do this with the IR lights first. They are on now, so I should be getting a notification shortly letting me know that uh, it has picked me up. There we go. So nighttime took a little longer than the daylight, but not bad. We'll see how this works. All right, lights are already on, so that means they've seen me. And waiting for the notification, waiting for the notification. There we go, just popped up. All right, not bad. While there is a lot to like about this camera, there are a few cons or things that I want you to be aware of when looking at this. First being, you are not going to get 24-7 recording from this camera, but you're not going to get 24-7 recording from any battery-powered camera. You need something that's continuously plugged into a power source to get that. The AI tracking is only for people and vehicles. I wish they would allow for animals as well, because I had a fox wander through my yard, and I really wish that this would have followed the fox so I could have seen what it was up to a little further in my yard. However, that could be changed in the future with software updates. The last thing I want you to be aware of is depending on where you have this mounted and what type of night vision you choose to use, you could wash out your video if you have it placed too close to a wall. My case, I could rotate to a certain extent and my wide field of view would get washed out because my LEDs and the RR lights were over here. This, the zoomed, could still see a little bit because it wasn't as close to the wall as my other camera lens. Just something I want you to be aware of when you're mounting this camera. I have only recently begun to understand the appeal of pan tilt cameras, but having one with a secondary zoom lens built in is a game changer. I can see the reason why this style of camera is so popular. UV makes a great range of cameras that do not require a fee for AI detection and lets you store your video clips encrypted locally on your device. The SoloCam S340 should be on your list if you're looking for a solid outdoor pan tilt camera that does not need to be plugged into a power source to work. If you're going back and forth between a stationary UV camera and a pan tilt camera like the S340, honestly, if you can mount this style of camera, I strongly recommend going with a pan tilt camera. Even if you think you cannot mount it, there are lots of options from third party manufacturers that will let you mount this camera onto either your siding or gutters. So really, you could use it just about anywhere. It has opened up a world of possibilities and actually helped me reduce the number of cameras I use because of the area that it can cover. Because of that, I strongly recommend the Eufy SoloCam S340. If this camera sounds like what you've been looking for, I will have a link where you can pick one up for yourself in the description area below. If you appreciate the time and effort that goes into making comprehensive videos like this, make sure to hit that like button to help other people find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here and want to be notified of my next review, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Still not sure if this is the right camera for you? On screen now, you will see two other Eufy cameras that I have reviewed in the past to help you make a more informed decision for yourself.